Welcome to OpenGL. Part, oh god, what are we on? Welcome to OpenGL part 6 here on Code Tech Tutorials. My name is Matt, and today we're going to be doing some little black magic trickery here on the shaders. A couple quick notes of the structural changes. I might not get them all, so I'm just going to be quick over it. Uh, we introduced a few new shaders to mess with. A 2D shader we're going to put over here. Just the vertex shader and what I'm calling a pizza frag shader. I'm not sure if that's going to stay, but I'm just going to show you how to work with the basics of a shader. So what we're going to do here is we're basically going to be going to be drawing a square and we're going to be using these positions as the X, Y coordinates because we're not going to be dealing with depth. We're basically going to be rendering a square on our screen that matches our screen size. And on there, we can apply any algorithm we want. So first, I'm just going to show you this square because it's kind of a necessary little uh, setup thing. It's pretty easy, though. It's just stuff we've already done. But for sake of clarity, I will explain it all. So if you'll recall in OpenGL uh, view space by default, we have negative one, negative one down here in this corner. And we have the positive up here in this corner, one comma one. So this point would be top left. Oh, I'm just gonna make a big dot there. And this one would be bottom left. And this next one would be top right. And this next one would be bottom right. And the point of that is, is if you connect them all together, you get this upside down Z looking thing, which is perfect to draw as a triangle strip. So we don't need much data. We just need these eight points and then we can draw it as a triangle strip using this function here. We just need to keep track of the count, which is eight because there's an X, Y. And I will show you the upload function that we use as well for that. I just overloaded this upload mesh, do it in this way where it returns a draw strip details, uh, which we've uh, added as a struct to the draw details header. So that is all we need to do to have that ready to draw as a strip. And once we do this draw, it's basically gonna fill this out. So it'll fill in this triangle and then it'll connect it with the strip based on this last point. So if you're using strip, well, strip's great for doing long arrays of, uh, I don't know if you just want a big line or a bendy line, so we might use it more, uh, but it's, it's a pretty cool way to very efficiently draw. So now that we have this square on the screen, we can start playing around with it using our shaders. We have set up some different shaders here. So we're gonna take a look at that and just dive right into it. So I went ahead and disabled the model matrix because we're just going to fill the whole screen the whole time with our rectangle. So we're not going to need that right now. So the 2D vertex shader, all it does is it takes this position as a VEC2 and it fills in the Z as just a zero all the time. So that way we're just flat on the screen. Now in this fragment shader, this is one to just play around with. As you can see, there is a circle function that we're probably going to use. Uh, but we're not going to mess with that right now. In fact, I'm just going to delete it. I'm also going to delete or comment out this resolution. So what we're going to do in here is start playing around with GL or frag chord. So when you're in your fragment shader, it is the space on your screen. So we can say like, well, if our frag chord is uh, above 700, let's change the, the X color to this, which would be the red in an RGB. And we can say for the Y, we can do something similar if Y is over 500. So you'll see by playing around with these numbers that this is your view space, the OpenGL view space. Because as you can see, it is working as intended. When the uh, X is over 700, it turns red. And when Y is over 500, which is here, it turns green and then there's a mix there. So you could start playing around with all kinds of stuff just based on this frag chord, but this frag chord is something you natively have access to. Uh, and when you resize your screen, you do have to make sure you're resizing your viewport 
or else this won't work. Of course, we have that set up in a callback already. And if I comment this out so that it doesn't change it, we will see that the frame buffer doesn't get changed as intended and we're stuck with our GL clear color, which I've said is this weird bluish color. So we definitely want that in the callback. So also in your callback in your game or whatever you're making, you can set so that uh, you know the resolution in your shader as well um, by setting the resolution to something and playing around with that. We're not, well, we might mess with that, but I think what we're going to do today is just apply a few out. Now keep in mind here the crux of this particular tutorial, episode 6, if there's anything to get, it's that you can do whatever you want with your shaders at this point. And by this point, you might understand enough of what's going on to just like go buck wild with this. Because essentially, now what we can do is pass anything we want into here. Like what do we want this shader to play around with? Do we want the mouse position? Because we could do that. We could go uniform. Uh, vec2, because it's an X and a Y. Uh, we'll just call it U mouse pause for now. And then here in our C++ code, whenever we move the mouse, we just want to update this shader. Based on that, we can start playing around with that. So we do need to set a callback to set up GLFW to keep reporting the mouse. Oh, and you'll also see that we made our shader a global pointer. So we got to be sure to initialize it. But since it's global, we can access it in our other files, like our callbacks file, by just using an extern and saying it's declared already. So that way we can update our shader in any of these callbacks. And you can in general do this for anything you want to uh, be able to find in other files. It's not necessarily a highly recommended long-term solution, but it works well when your program is pretty small and you're just making an application. So now in this movement callback, anytime there's a mouse movement, we just want to update our shader by going our shader use make sure we actually have it used otherwise we could be writing to the wrong shader even though we only have one right now so you mouse pause and glm back to of the x and y yes see glfw takes it in as a double work but we're going to pass it through as a float or pass it up to the shader rather okay so now here in this shader we have our mouse pause it'll get set anytime we need it and we can do stuff with it do be sure to actually call this with glfw uh, like we have the other ones previously with set cursor position callback and we're going to pass it this function here okay so now uh, i went ahead and put a c out so we should at least get our position there oh we've got a uniform so what you can do if this happens if you're using the same shader class is uh, we can just go to the stack frame if we're in debug and check out what name it had a problem with. So we'll just keep going back. We see it got to set vec2 and that's u mouse pause. So it doesn't like it for some reason. So now we know the source of the problem. We can do a little troubleshooting. Uh, also, I may have skipped over this, but we did add a shader class. It's just GLSL shader. And uh, really all it does is it handles loading up shaders with this constructor. And we've got some stuff to just call our gl things for us that way we don't have to have these all over the place we just use the shader class and call the function we want so the thing about these shaders and the reason it was having an error is when you're using these newer versions i believe the other ones might be a little different uh, if you try to set one of these well the shader only actually uses the variable if you're doing something with it since we're not doing anything with the U mouse pause it doesn't actually instantiate it so that's why it's throwing an error so we do actually have to use this in order for this to be happy so let's just put something in here so we went ahead and put uh just a little bit of math in here using the mouse position so if the frag cord is greater than the mouse position we're going to set the color uh for x and y comparing to x and y so what we'll see is a little effect that looks a little something like this now it seems a little reversed on the y and I will explain why in a second and we can fix that very easily. So to quickly visualize this in our viewport space, our X zero is on the left side, X max is on the right side. And also in our viewport space, Y zero is at the bottom. 
white max is at the top. But if we look at how the mouse is reporting, it is reporting Y0 at the top and Y max at the bottom. So it's essentially flipped. So all we need to do is we need to take whatever the height of the window is, which we can get through this little GLFW function on the fly, so it's always right. Take that height and minus whatever the X is, and then we'll get results more as you're expecting. So now that we have detected the mouse position, we can render our own cursor or draw algorithms around the mouse or whatever we want to do. So let's go ahead and change our shader to render a little something for the mouse. And we'll just use like a circle for now. To draw this little circle, we're just going to use a few specific functions that exist within shaders. There is this distance function where you can pass it two vectors and it'll give you the distance between them. So if we use that and pass it the mouse position and the frag coordinates and check how far apart they are. Uh, if it's greater than the radius we set, which is 10 in this case, we're going to discard, which means we do nothing for this fragment. If it doesn't end up discarding, it sets the color to white. So thus, anything within this radius should be set to the color white. And congratulations, you now have a hardware rendered. So what we could do from here is we could turn off our normal mouse. And you can do that in GLFW. So you just want to write the line of code after you set up your window. Uh, GLFW set input on your window, the cursor to hidden. So now when you hit play, your normal mouse is hidden and you just have a circle. Okay, well, there's a lot more we can get into from here, but if you're able to understand all this, excellent. If not, please ask questions down below and we will continue with some shader magic henceforth. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace out. Also, I want to say special thanks to the patrons of this channel.